goes nothing. As soon as my stream actually starts up here. Yeah, there we go. Oh god, not muted. Stupid commercials, whatever. But anyway. Hello everybody. Today we are uh we're playing we're doing a donation decklist league at courtesy of I Do Nothing A Lot, frequenter uh in chat. Donated for me to play some vintage for the first time in a long time. We're gonna be doing a vintage league with Joe Brennan's uh eternal eternal weekend winning list, playing some bug. I've not played vintage since I I, I think I've only streamed vintage three times ever. I thought that means I've also only played Vintage three times ever, uh, on Moto at least, because I streamed the White Trash list, you can see it as my only other deck list here. I streamed it a couple times before playing in uh, 2018 Eternal Weekend with the White Trash list, which uh, ended up better than I thought it would. But, um, so yeah, I am n not a Vintage expert or have any knowledge of Vintage by any means, but I figured it'd be a fun thing to try out um we're gonna we're gonna play this list which is from what i gather it's just jund right it's just blue jund which seems a little bit straightforward at least there aren't like that many cantrips we have like we can only play the one ponder and the one brainstorm so there aren't that many big decisions to make you just like play your good cards and you beat them to death with them is what i imagine this goes but i the biggest hurdle seems like I have no idea what vintage metas look like at all. So I don't, it's going to be hard for me to like always analyze like what the opponent's on and uh, how best to approach that sideboarding wise and like just gameplay wise in general. But uh, we're going to play by ear. I also have a list of uh, vintage decks pulled up on my other monitor to figure out what people play. <laughs> because I'm certainly not going to know. All these, yeah, so I'm aware of the existence of Dredge, Oath, Outcome, Shops, Survival. Those those decks all ring a bell. The other decks, the less so, kind of fall off as we go down the list. DPS. Uh, that's about it. The Jeskai Arcanist lists and stuff. But yeah, let's, uh, let's jam. This is going to be... A mess, I'm sure. So let's just get in there. Vintage with Joe Brennan's bug list. Vintage League. Huh. Oh yeah, Vintage Master 87, I believe, is Joe Brennan himself. Obviously, much better at Vintage. Top five leaderboard name Vintage Master literally one eternal weekend. We're gonna sit here uh, tripping over our own feet here. So yeah, what? How how badly could this possibly go? The one other thing that always is a little bit concerning when like. Trying to stream vintage, sometimes the wait times can be a little bit egregious, depending on like the time of the day that you stream. Sometimes there just aren't a lot of people. There are only 121 active players in the league and stuff. So sometimes, especially when you're streaming vintage, you just kind of have to sit and twiddle your thumbs a little bit while you're uh, waiting for your matches to start. I guess I should also pull up my own deck list off to the side. I guess I'm... I can always just look at it. Right? Oh, not that. <coughs> Excuse me. Because uh, we have stuff like Demonic Tutor. I guess Demonic Tutor not a good example, because when you cast it, you would know exactly what's in your deck. But, uh, for other things, knowledge of our, our, our uh, mana base and stuff, we have one Bayou and three, uh, three of each of the other blue fetches, it looks like. A lot of dredge cards of uh, varying shapes and sizes. 
force of vigor, main deck force of vigor. What a what a world vintage is. But I guess it makes sense. Like two main deck collector with one main deck force of vigor. A lot of uh, artifact hate for because uh, you know shops is one of the best decks in the format. So make that that all tracks. Four death right shamans and a bunch of grave hate because dredge is always horrifying. Stuff like that. One misdirection for Force of Will. I mean, misdirection is always like the poor man's Force of Will, right? It's always like the f the fifth one way back when. One more misdirection over like Force of Negation. I guess like, because obviously you can play misdirection on your own turn, which is uh, part of Force of Negation's folly. Misdirection to pet card of Joe's, that's why I in the deck. Okay. <laughs> At least I'm not totally out of line by saying, why is there this misdirection in this deck? It seems kind of weird. Again, I am far from an expert in this format. Really uh, throwing everything against the wall and seeing what sticks. Misdirect recall. That's a good That's a good one to misdirect for sure. I always think of him to Turok when uh, I think of upsides on misdirection because that's like one of the big things about when you played in legacy sometimes you got to misdirect hymns which was bananas yeah i imagine like this those does look like tons of fun if i were like if i played this format more obviously like there there are some some sweet things that are going on but mostly we're just going to be floundering about for five rounds here I have no idea how to sideboard or ass assess what my opponent's doing in uh, most ways, shapes, and forms. And also, like I just mentioned a second ago, these uh, the wait times really really get to you sometimes. You just kind of have to sit and hang out. I guess I'm just gonna like look through these top lists while we're here. Uh, let's have a brief perusal through uh, through vintage, I guess. What's going on? So Dredge is the top is like the, the the top blazing deck currently, in terms of I think it's just number, right? Yeah, it's the number of decks. This deck plays a bunch of like force counter spells and stuff right now. Yeah, like none of your things actually have CMCs. Ex uh, yeah, you don't actually like cast any of your spells anymore with Dredge. Uh, like that wasn't always necessarily the case, but like sometimes they played like uh, uh, like Nature's Quim and stuff. But with the advent of Force of Vigor existing, you get to just do that now. So yeah, you actually can't you produce mana at all, and none of your things need mana to go on the stack in any capacity. Yeah, it seems like it's a pretty kind of even split, but uh, pretty even split, split between archetypes, except for obviously like aggro doesn't really exist. Like the most aggressive deck is probably like survival, which is kind of towing the line between like aggro and like graveyard value combo y stuff. Then like dredge and shops are kind of aggro decks, but also just like everything gets like bumped up on like three levels and like just bullshit that they're doing because it's vintage. So, like, sure, Shops is, like, kind of like an uh, aggro prison-y style deck. Because you have, like, your thorn and your spheres and stuff. But, like, also it just feels like bullshit. Like, it's like an aggro deck, but, like, in very heavy air quotes. Like, Oath, Paradoxical being, like, combo decks. Storm also being, obviously, a combo deck. This is our deck, right? Something similar to our deck. Wow. Price of Ari Queen in this one. Yeah. Certainly similar. Alright, we got our first match. We can stop fucking around with this for now at least. Why do I keep clicking on Google Chrome instead of the actual match here? Alright, we're playing against the deck 84. 
losing some die rolls. Cool, cool, cool. Not an expert, but this hand seems bad. We have two weeks lands on a mock sapphire. <laughs> no, nothing close to a castable spell. I mean, te I get, technically we have two castable spells. We, I, we, have, we have three castable spells. We can cast this mock sapphire and the force in the destruction, but no, yeah, this hand does not does not seem very strong. But also mulling to six. Ah, this hand seems much better. <laughs> I think we're just going to put the third Tarmog Wave to the bottom here. Opponent keeps six. Don't think we need all three of these Tarmog Waves. We really want our mana and we want our removal spells and death ray shamans and stuff. Scalding Tarn, go. Keep ancestral. This feels like upkeep ancestral. Yep, can't do anything about that. All right, you get to draw three cards. Another death right shaman. All right, now we just play two death rights, I guess. Think it's better than just casting one tarmogoyf here. Opponent could be on a lot of things, but uh, I think I'd rather get these death rights online, get my mana freed up, get graveyard eight online if like that's an important thing. So we want to fetch probably you see here. We have Mox Emerald for green. We want blue access to blue mana, and we want access to black mana. So yeah, you see makes the most sense. order if there's like a proper order of things I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to like be playing around like days or something I don't know we're gonna just cast our spells and hope they're good enough we get two death right shamans next turn we do have access to four mana but our there are only the two lands in the graveyard but we could Potentially cast two Tarmogoyfs, or cast Tarmogoyf, cast Assassin's Trophy, or just cast a Goyf, leave up death rate activations and stuff. And depends on what our opponent is up to here. Preordain. So they're Grix's colors. So like, what is that? And they specifically fetched out the, the turn here. Sub Storm Thief, thanks for the uh, three month resub. Not, expected to, not what I expected to tune into today. Yeah, you get to see me uh, desperately try to figure out what's happening. All right, preordain bottom bottom go. We drew a wasteland. Wasteland's good. Wasteland gives us two more lands for the death rates, and puts my opponent down mana. I don't know which land I would want to be targeting here really. I feel like the underground sea. Black's just like a scarier color than red, I imagine. So we can wasteland the underground sea and like just straight up just cast two Tarmogoyfs here. Bulk is untapped. Usually for Pyroblast. I mean, I mean that tracks. And none of our hand is counterable via Pyroblast, so it's not unreasonable to just hit the UC anyway. Like, we're not getting, like, spell pierce or anything here. We're not casting this assassin's trophy right now. There are currently three lands in the yard, so that'll be five. So even if we activate both these death rates for mana, those will be three lands left in the yard afterwards. So yeah, I, I like just wasting this under MC and just casting two Tarmogoyfs. Okay, we're Ooh, what's happening? Bolt of death rate. Exile. Wait, where's my opponent's graveyard? Oh, got popped out here. 
exile that. Make a green mana. Bolt's fine. I don't know why they bolted. Do they think I targeted their Volk or something? I don't know why they popped out that wasteland right there, but whatever. Grixis Thieves. Seems like a fair Grixis deck. If you try to counter the bolt, they can daze and say, oh, they're not tracks. Force Pitch Fluster Storm, all right. You got it. Kill your underground sea. Make green. Cast this turn remove. All right, my opponent has five cards in hand. We have nothing. But we have a 4-5 Goyf, so that's pretty good. And we still have the Assassin's Trophy. Alright, I'm going to attack, and then say go. The basis of my whole plan is beat them to death with this Goyf and hope this Deathrite Shaman is okay. I mean, it drains. We have plenty of uh, food for the Deathrite here. It's a lot of volcanics. Hopefully we hit the right land then. Seems like we hit the right one, right? Snipe that uh, underground sea, now they just have a bunch of blue-red lands. All right. Let's exile their ancestral recall. Uh, this wasn't playing around Snapcaster Mage, was it? They like Snap Recall or something? I thought I was supposed to sort of just be the death right to play around that. Could easily just get wrecked here, but I think now we're just in it to. Almost have enough mana to actually hard cast this force. Not quite, though, so. Yeah, we want to play this, because if we draw another land, we want to be able to hard cast force, just in case. Alright, my plan seems to be working. I cast my spells and then I hoped that they were good enough. Mystical Tutor, that seems scary. I could like trophy their land to try to like stone rain them, but I, and if they wanted a land they could they'd have to shuffle it away, but does not seem worth Don't know what this mystical tutor is getting, just like a kill spell for my Tarmogoyf? Or are they, like, murdering me? Very concerned. Still don't even know what my opponent's doing. Are they just, like, Grixis Thieves? There are Grixis Thieves list on here. They play three Vault. No, they played this one, the random one they pulled up, plays two Vault, three C. But they do play Mystical Tutor and Lightning Bolt. Grixis Thieves seems like a pretty good guess here. They don't seem like they have a way to actually kill my thing, though. But they could just try to kill me. Which is not unreasonable. But yeah, I guess this is fine. I don't think my stone rain is going to do very good here. Or my attempt at stone raining. I think it's just fine to let this, let this go. And see what scary card that they uh, mystical for. Oh, wait, yeah, they revealed Lightning Bolt, duh. They, they do have to reveal the card that they mystical for. But yeah, I will eat. So we want to keep card types in yard, right? Uh, instant, 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 one sorcery. So we don't want to eat this preordained, so I guess we eat the mystical tutor since they're going to already have another bolt in the yard. If that was their mystical tutor, that does not seem very great for them. Unless they have a plan to kill my Tarmogoyf. Because they're just going to one here. Merchant Scroll. Alright. That also resolves. Can't do anything about any of these cards. They get a 
brainstorm. All right. Well, this seems like super scary. We, I think our best draw is just blue card, right? Forced to try to just end the game. Demonic Tutor. That could be a blue card. Can it be lethal? What does our deck list look like? <laughs> we have 20 minutes? Yeah, we're fine. Can we Demonic Tutor for a lethal? We don't have any other card types that we can put in the bin. Oh, we could Demonic Tutor for Black Lotus and just try to kill them, right? We could put Artifact in the bin that way, right? Oh, uh, wait, can we... No. Oh, we just Demonic Tutor for Time Walk, but we can't cast the Time Walk, right? We only have three mana, yeah. Hmm. So we'd have one mana after the Demonic Tutor. We could, we could just get Lotus and try to kill them. The other plan would be, like, just, like... Demonic for recall, probably, and just recall myself. I like just Lotus, though. Lotus just kills them. They're tapped out, so they can't, like, kill my Tarmogoyf. So they'd have to, like... And if they can't counter the Lotus, they'd have to counter the D-Tutor, so... Yeah, this seems pretty reasonable. Because if they counter the Lotus, it just still goes in the yard, and they still die. Oh, no. Force of Negation. Pitching Mana Drain. All right. They, they got it, I guess. Could, it couldn't even have been Force of Will, it's funny. It had to be the, the Force of Negation. Because the Force of Will, force of will would have uh, been lethal. But now they need an answer for this Tarmogoyf, which it seems that their deck is hard for us to, to have. They could find, like, blockers if they're, like, Snapcaster Mage deck or something. Two Lightning Bolts, Treasure Cruise, alright. Yeah, they're definitely some sort of just fair Grixis deck, which seems like it probably has fits getting a Tarmogoyf up the board. Yep, cool. Alright. Fair grixis -y deck, huh? I don't feel like we have a lot of cards here. The only cards that I'm like thinking about are these ones. But it seems like pretty easy cuts to cut like this artifact garbage. It only really hits like their Moxin, which also just affects our Moxin. Didn't really see any other cards. Like we might just we might need to like reassess sideboarding after we see more of their deck, but it seems like Pretty reasonable to. I don't even know if like Assassin's Trophy is that good, but I guess it, like, it, it blows up like Planeswalker and stuff. It's probably good enough, right? Can kill a Notion Thief if they're on like the Thieves deck or something. Does this deck have a Mana Denial plan? Is that is that a thing? It just feels kind of weird to like leave in. I don't know. Uh, I guess if they don't have any basics, then Trophy Lands is like not unreasonable. Uh, I don't know. Most of these other cards seem good, though, right? Like, I definitely feel like this is a play. Like, at least Collector Oof has power and toughness, which is a big deal. But I don't know. They just have a bunch of lightning bolts. But we're not short on lightning bolt targets, I suppose. We have a bunch of death rags, Leobold, Brace Bar or Click, stuff like that. I don't think Vintage is a format where you board out your forces in fair matchups. Like, Legacy's not even a format where you board out your forces in fair matchups anymore. Misdirection seems decent because my opponent's on black cards. No, black cards aren't misdirection-y, right? It's just blue cards now because you mean misdirection ancestral. It's not like hymns. Misdirectioning, like, a thought season isn't great. If we're boarding out misdirection in the blue matchups, why is it in our deck? It's, like, I guess my question, right? What are we doing with this card if we're not misdirecting like exactly ancestral recalls, or like removal spells on their on our stuff? I guess they have fatal push. I can see their deck didn't play any creatures yet. Which just seems like it has to be good though. Get the notion thief. Yeah, this card's a pretty good deal with notion thief. I feel like I want this cluster storm. They cast so many non-creature spells, or they cast so many instants and sorceries.
thief in response to the misdirection. So, like, they draw the cards anyway. That seems, like, a little bit far-fetched. So much mana. I don't know. I'm not convinced on these oofs. Guess we'll see. This is, like, five mana if they're Ancestraling, and then I'm, uh, force or I'm misdirectioning, and then they're also flashing an Ocean Thief at that, like, at that point, and I don't have, like, a removal spell up, because I paid no mana, and they paid five, right? All right, this seems like Snapkeep. We have an Ancestral Recall. I'm supposed to just, like, fire this off in my opponent's upkeep, I think. I could wait till turn two to try to protect the Ancestor with this Flusterstorm. That might actually be more realistic. It also lets me, like, just leave up Flusterstorm on turn one in case they play something scary. Like, we're not in any rush here. We're playing a... F oh, scary. Like, we're playing a fair matchup, right? So we don't need to, like, fire this off immediately. I want to try to stop their shenanigans. Although they could play, like, a turn two Narset here with the Mox Ruby, so... Although then we just get such a response to it. Because we're leaving up Blue Mana. Oh, I wish I could flusters from that. I wonder if they detutored for that Sapphire. Oh, this Collector is looking good if we can keep it alive. I feel like they're going to play something scary next turn. I'm not going to appreciate it. I'm supposed to just lead on Trop so I don't get, like, have to deal with, like, oh, I cracked my fetch and then they cast their ancestral response to my fetch or whatever. I just, like, leave up the blue man all the time. It's worse against, like, a Wasteland if that's a card that's in their deck, obviously. What do they detutor for? It's gotta be the... It, it has to have not been a recall, right? Because they would have fired it off just now. So it ha I assume it's the Sapphire. Which means they want to cast a big spell, right? Like they're going to like wheel me or something. Like they just get their fast man into play and then they just cast a wheel next turn. So yeah, I think we just want to ensure that we can try to fluster them. look really stupid if we like ancestral from their upkeep and then they <laughs> wheel of fortune to me after opponent has got a lot of mana and also nothing I guess they, they have to have like notion thief here right that's the thing that they're doing so they're recalling so if we recall in response to their recall, and they all and their last card is Notion Thief, we just get absolutely demolished. We also can't flusterstorm this ancestral, but we could try to do ancestral into like a forcible, which seems like pretty reasonable. I think if their last card is Notion Thief, we just like fucking concede because they draw six cards. But I think it's much more realistic to try to ancestral for a counter to their ancestral. Time to get bodied beyond space and time. They could just also just counter my ancestral. Oh no, please don't. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it to me, opponent. Okay, that's not black mana. Whew. Alright. They're just hard casting at force of negation here or something? Yeah. All right, the tracks. Yeah, I think we're just gonna leave up the fluster again. I really wanna play this oof, like oof uh, wasteland next turn. Seems like it might actually be able to do something. If we can get out of this turn well off, they did just recall. I could also just like bolt my my oof. But we can't really protect. This flush storm is uh, rapidly losing value, so. Ooh, more wastelands. I dig it. I think I'm fine with just oof wasteland here. Hit the 
or C. Even if we, even if the oop doesn't live, the C takes them off of black, at least. I could just hard cast a force or something. We have a lot here. Vamp. Hey, Eric. Thanks for the host. Appreciate it. Hope your stream went well. We're playing some vintage today and uh, just a real mess all around. No idea what we're doing. I feel like we're about to get wheeled. Yeah, it's Joe Brennan's list. What's happening? Four mana. Jason, that's pretty good. We can trophy it with Fluster Backup, though. Yeah, I've streamed Vintage very little, but we got a donation deck list, so I was like, yeah, let's do it. Why not? Yeah, I guess we can. Yeah, we can just trophy this Jace with Fluster Storm backup. It's like pretty reasonable, considering they only have two cards in hand and one mana up. Well, now they have one card in hand but two mana up. But that means that this Jace definitely isn't living. What's this last card? Interesting. All right. So now I guess we want to ponder, but if we, f yeah, I guess we can ponder and then just like find the good card shuffle. It's awkward if we like have, find two cards we want off the ponder because we want to. We're def we're one hundred percent having trophy this chase. But I think it's more realistic that we find the one good card and we shuffle than we find two good cards and like don't want to shuffle right. Or if we like trophy first and then cast ponder with no shuffle effects, then like we want one good card but then have more dead draws after. I think we will ponder. Hey, oh man, that's two good cards. Uh, I think this is quite better than Oko. Oko seems really good. It's definitely slower than Goyf. Maybe we just want Goyf to kill them. Yeah, I think I just want Goyf to kill them. So we stack these. Jet. Oko, Goyf, Don't Shuffle, Fetch, for I guess Bayou. Trophy the Jace, and then pass the turn. Opponent's top decking, we have a 5 6, seems pretty strong. All colors of moxins. I really don't know what they're doing. Put them on a grid. Maybe they're. I don't know. I have nothing. Three mana. Narset. Oof. That's a doozy. Four moxins. Still no black mana. Yes. Fact. Narset's certainly a, a hitter. All right. Bull. That's not that scary. Oh, wait, we have a misstep. All right, nice. That was, that was quite an adventure. Although, no, they have a Crater Maker. They can just Crater my oof. Hmm. I wonder if that means I don't play it. Could also just, like, use the oof to trade for the Crater Maker, but we could potentially draw removal spells. I don't know that we have that many. It'd be so good if we could keep this oof around, though, right? Turn off all their artifacts and, like, wasteland them. It's down to one mana. I don't think I want to play this oof, though, not in the face of this Crater Maker. Although, it would clear the path for us to kill this Narsa. Although, we actually would rather the 
Crater Maker block, and then we play the move after Z. Yeah, let's just. There's a force will. That's kind of obnoxious because they can just hard cast it. But they're just force will bolt, so that's pretty good for me. Am I even supposed to attack this Narset? I mean, uh, we already our recall's already gone forever, so maybe I'm just supposed to like attack their base. Just leave the Narset in play. My opponent has a bazillion mana, even in the face of all of our wastelands. I'm not very keen on drawing cards this game, unless we draw like exactly our brainstorm. Yeah, I'm taking that face. I think we might have like a couple other draw card cards in our deck. I'm not positive. This seems like an unusual block, but I'll take it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, now this block happens. Now we can cast the oof, misstep their bolt, and fluster storm their force of will, and double wasteland them. I guess not in that order. I should have actually wasteland them outside of this. I don't think it matters, though. It didn't force it. Oh, because they think they can bolt it. And then they can like attempt to uh, force my counter my my misstep here, but then we can fluster their. Fluster their force of will here. Oh no, they can't actually force will. I should have paid. No, I, I won't leave this up anyway. But yeah, they can't because they didn't float me out in response to the oof. They both didn't force and didn't. Yeah, they did not sequence that right. I sequenced that poorly. My opponent counter sequenced it poorly. So they still have this force in hand. They're now also just down to one mana. Alright, I take back what I said about Oof. Jimmy Power Gamer. The Oof was good. <laughs> yeah, I should have, uh... Wastelanded... I should have played the second Wasteland and then Wastelanded both the, uh... Volcanics in draw step... Or in, in combat. I didn't expect them to block was the thing. That was just a really unusual chump block. But yeah, assuming that they're going to chump block. Yeah, the block was really weird. I Like, because it, it was out of range of block plus bull. Because it was six toughness. So, like, that wasn't a plan. I have no idea what that block was about. But assuming that they do block, we fire off both the wastelands on the on the uh, volcanics. And then they just don't have the mana for bolt plus force. But we could, our hand is still beat the bolt plus force anyway, even if they sequence it properly. Like, floating mana or force of will, like, hardcast forcing the oof. And then getting that countered, and then bolting the oof, and then getting that countered as well. Like, so my opponent resolved two ancestry calls, and we have resolved zero, but we have won both games. I don't think that's how vintage is supposed to work. I'm not a hundred percent. I still don't even know what the opponent was doing. Like, the only cards we saw were, like, 
we saw Demonic Tutor, Vamp Tutor, like two, like two Lightning Bolts, Narset, Ancestral, Mystical Tutor. Like four colors of Moxon though, like two off color Moxon, which don't you don't see a lot of off color Moxon in Fair decks, right? Like that's not really a thing. Oh uh, well, I found maybe I'm wrong because I found the person that we just played, the deck eighty four, who does in fact have two lightning bolts, vamp, demonic, uh, merchant scroll. All colors of Moxon. Yeah, all right. I guess I guess I'm wrong because this is probably just the deck that I'm able to play. Yeah, two Crater Makers on the sideboard. Why would you bring in Crater Maker? I guess it kills like Death Rites. But yeah, all right. This is probably the list we were playing against. It was just Grix. No, this isn't Thieves though. This is just Grixis stuff. The win cons are Jace or Tinker Blightsteel, it looks like. Man, it would have been really scary if my opponent had, like, vamped for, like, Tinker Blightsteel instead of whatever they ended up vamping for. Alright, I would love to play first. Um, Alright, we have mana, land, and uh, a bunch of spells that I can cast for quote-unquote free. This feels like a mulligan. Like, I don't think... We have Force Y and Misdirection. I don't think it's worth keeping a hand that literally can't do anything otherwise. Like, we don't have, like, a Goy for a Death Rite or a cantrip or anything to play here. Feels like this hand isn't to keep. Can't cast this force of vigor for however much or little that's worth, but we do have like one and a half force of wills. I don't think that makes or breaks a hand or anything. Not an expert. Right, this hand seems much better. Um. Oh yeah, I saw someone on Twitter post the... Uh, Play Steel Colossus is uh, is green or whatever. My opponent kept seven. We will keep the six. I think we're putting the second force to the bottom. So they're gonna pierce to like force pitch pierce here. Oh, that was you. Neat. Probably want two lands. We can't cast this trophy right now, but I think second force goes to the bottom here. Are we just like explore time walking? I guess we'll find out next turn. What is our opponent up to? Hopefully something spell pierceable. I guess I'll also take that. More lands is nice, I think. Maybe I just want to wasteland this trap. I kind of just want to wasteland this trap. Maybe it's just the DNT player in me. I mean, our wasteland's not casting any of our spells here, besides this time walk, I guess. But uh, am I supposed to just like fire off spell pierces? So they're rug. Are they like rug outcome? The only rug deck that, that I know, right? If that's the case, then I don't want to cast the spell pierce, right? But I kind of They have six cards in hand. I think I'm going to let this resolve. Maybe I'm supposed to just hit, like, tag something with spell pierce at the nearest opportunity. But, like, our hand is just sitting here. It's a thing that we can put into play, which is nice. Another trap. Oath. Okay, they're an oath deck. So we probably just want to spell pierce this, and if they counter, we can still untap and, like, assassin trophy it. We also have force of if we really need it. So they're oath. So we want under. I don't think I'm going to force it if they counter, because then we could just Assassin's Trophy, and then if that gets countered too, then we have the forces like last 
ditch effort, but like time walk's a good magic card, right? We don't want to pitch if we don't have to. I think we're just gonna pass the turn here though, unless we draw like a goy or something. We have three mana. I don't think I just want to cast a time walk to draw a card. Oof. Well, that's probably worth casting. It's a clock. And just hit them for one, I guess. Leaving up one mana doesn't really do anything. I don't think there's a specific draw to exile card in there. Yard. Alright, let's oof it up. We have a reasonable amount of protection against Oath stuff, right? We have Force and Trophy. And if we get more creatures in the play, then this time walk gets better, because we get to, like, just deal more damage with it. Another Oath. All right. Maybe I'm supposed to Force Will this one. I guess I could always just do the play that I was just talking about, right? Where I just, I'm going to Trophy it, and then if they try to counter my Trophy, then I can Force and play that fight. Unless they have, like, Flusterstorm, then that plan goes south. Probably just supposed to force for, for safety. We have five cards in. That's so many cards. Yeah, I have to imagine that they're going to, to stop me in some aspect. Regardless, whether it's like a spell pierce or something. So there's still a trophy here. If one of their last if some of their last four cards stops me, then then they, they get it. I guess I'm supposed to leave a body, won't I? Just in case I want to like, gain life. Although, there's no creatures in the yard right now, but you never know. That's since I'm hellbent. Obviously, it doesn't really matter. If I like try to represent blue mana or something. So, yeah, now we just want to kill them as fast as possible. Jeez, alright, this is bad. Uh we can, like one source right here, so let's eat their pierce. Alright, well, gotta draw a real good card here. That's not a very good card. <laughs> well, hard to beat. Just three oath of druids, right? Can't even like fatal push both of our creatures. We can't like kill off all our creatures to prevent those from triggering because we have two. They're just gonna like, get some hor horrible behemoth, yeah. Imagine we are dead. A good one. I really don't think there's a, a real good draw step for us here, especially because they're casting a big through time. They just had a uh, a real good hand. Also kill, <clears throat> kill my oof. Yeah, we're just not winning this game, right? If they kill my oof, we get like what a Tarmogoyf. So oof is goes both ways, right? Oh no! Now we don't get anything because they can give me a one-one, right? Also, I think they're just pinging my face. Alright, I've. Alright, I'm bored. <laughs> we were dead as soon as we couldn't kill a third oath. Let's see, just fucking around at that point. Alright. So, Force of Vigor seems like. Might be a decent card in this matchup. Like, it's a little bit awkward because obviously, if you want to uh, cast it for free, you need to do it while it's on their turn. So, it needs to be the turn that they played it. Otherwise, they still just get the trigger on the upkeep. Um, 
Bring these cages. Cage stops. Yeah, right. What's the text on oath? Yeah. So cage stops at. Um, I don't think any of these other cards do anything unless I want unless I want fluster for like counter wars. This fatal push seems like it has zero targets. Misdirection helps in like force of will fights. Uh, Nico Pro eighty three, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Oh, these cards seem fine. Oofs again, only turn off their fast mana, but especially on the play, oofs like probably fine in that respect. I guess turning off fast mana is like just actively good. Bring in these, I guess, and uh, I don't even know what our cuts look like. These Narsets do anything? They stop like recall, right? And brainstorm, but they technically stop Niv. Niv misses it, but not not realistically. We just don't want that thing to hit the board. Huh? Four has so many cuts. This is this is the problem I knew going in is that like I can like logically deduce what some of the good cyber options are to come in, but like. In terms of, like, trying to board out cards, it just seems, like, actually impossible for my level of experience in the format and my level of experience with the deck. Oh, these Narsets feel like they're kind of mopey. Oko seems like it actually might be okay. Opponent's not drawing that many cards, right? Let's get, like, Ponder, Prior, and Brainstorm. That's probably a long cut. Narset's probably busted, right? Uh, maybe we just cut some of the slow cards because we want to just beat them up. 20 seconds to board out three cards here, huh? Maybe we just cut these flusters. Wait. Fluster only, like, fights over the Oath on the stack, right? Uh, so we have Emerald, Sapphire, O1, Goyf, Time Walk, and Brainstorming. This game seems actually, like, keepable? It's a little bit dicey, but I'm into it, I think. Well, the Misstep's really good. Let's we'll, we'll just keep this hand and see what happens. Cast our O1 Tarma Goyf, see how it goes. there? The walk just like cantrips, right? I'd rather just like have a thing on the board to hit at least like hit them when I cantrip. I'm probably walking next turn if I draw like nothing relevant. But I feel like just getting the goy from play is a pretty reasonable on turn one. Second goy. <laughs> yeah, it makes I mean it makes it worth one two now. Yeah. Goyf's currently no one, but like if I cast the walk on turn one, it doesn't really do anything for the Goyf, because we just untap and then cast the Goyf, and then now we're, we're back to this exact scenario, except now they can counter the walk, which is probably worse for me than countering the Goyf, but I will just play a second Goyf and say go, but that seems like kind of miserable. I think I want to hit land drops as badly as possible, so I think we're going to time walk and then like hopefully like try to cast Brainstorm or something. Let's see if this time walk resolves. I feel like the answer might be no. Oh, wow. Alright. Get you. Oh, God. Are we just gonna like fire off this brainstorm? I have a history on this stream of brainstorm locking myself. Whenever I try to play blue decks. So if I cast this brainstorm, it's just gonna go so fucking badly for me. But like the upside of casting this brainstorm is so good, right? We hit any land, we just get to like make the goif a lot bigger, play a second goif here, have three mana ready for Narset or Oko. Yeah, I don't think we're really waiting 
or something. Like, the only other play is Charm Whiff, and that feels, like, really weak, because that means next turn, if we miss again, then, like, we are firing off the Brainstorm again into the blind, and then we can't follow it up with, like, a three drop. So I think this is the best turn to Brainstorm. And we're just gonna, like, miss and die horribly. Holy shit, we didn't miss! Look at that! Look at us go. Alright, what are we shuffling away? Uh, I kind of want, like, all of these. <laughs> Probably the Narset's leaving, and then maybe the Pierce? Because we, I think we want to tap out for this Goyf, and then we have Mistup, and we have Force of Vigor and Oko as protection. Is that good enough, though? Because then if they have, like, I think I'm gonna put this Narset. So the question is, I think between like Pierce or Mista, but I'm tapping out for the Goyf and they just, if they just have a Oath here. I mean, we're still just fucked if they have like Force of Will, but that's my life, I think. I think we just put back the, maybe we put back this Mista because Pierce is more live if they don't have, yeah, all right, let's do that. Yeah, my brain hurts. I'm gonna get a UC here, I think. Oh, black. Disposable hero, thanks for the 8-month reset. Why are you playing this and not sort of Andor Shield? Or I am going to play Pokemon Shield as soon as the stream is done, in fact. But I have my stream scheduled on Fridays, regardless of the games that come out. I did this for you, chat. But anyway, what was I talking about? Dying horribly to just turn two Oath here. They just, like, have an Oath and a counter spell. We just, like, died, right? That's my life. I'm going to force a bigger it, yeah. Force of will, my force of vigor, and then we're gonna die in the fire. <clears throat> yep. We have a couple draws here, but not a whole lot. <coughs> That's certainly not one of them. I believe we are dead. They could hit like not. Yeah, they could hit like Grizzle Brand and not the Niv Mizzet, and then they don't get to like draw a bunch of cards. And then we could like draw Assassin's Trophy. Wait, no, yeah, no, if they have a we're super dead. We've seen Cromorant. Uh, I don't think so. I've not, I've not, I've not gone very far into the game at all. We've gone Route Three. All right. So what's our plan here? Oh, is Cromorant, the uh, the the Pelican thing. Draw Assassin's Trophy. Hey, Brazen Bar. All right, that's the kind of a plan, right? <clears throat> this is whenever anyone casts an instant or sorcery, so I'm probably going to draw 9,000 cards, but uh, you have, like, the Spell Pierce to try to force their Brazen Borrower. Then, obviously, they're going to get a Grizzle Brand, but, uh, you know. Might as well try it, right? It's Petty Theft, this Niv Mizzet. Arun, Perun, whatever. Don't look very weird. Don't know why it popped out like that. Draw your card, whatever. You can deal damage. If we had, uh, Force of Vigor to one of our own Moxin to deal two extra damage. That might have actually been the correct play. Is when I cast my Force of Vigor to blow up... We already had... Th we only had two lives at that point. We drew the trap, I think. But we could have Force of Vigor on Moxin to put... They would be a six right now, and then we would have lethal. But... That would have been a super heads-up play. Uh, that's... Well, now we're dead. So we can't spell Grace the Veil somewhere, so we just pay the two and we die.
kill some. A pretty good magic card. Yeah, now we're dead. Pretty good. Pretty good board state you got there, opponent. Hey, my turn wars are seven eights. They're ready to brawl. Oh yeah, they just get the machine gun me to death. Grizzlebrand plus Niv Mizza is a combo. Yeah, I think I might have actually wanted to okay, yeah, we're dead. I wonder if I actually did want to like force a bigger mountain thing to put them at two less. I don't know if that would have actually like come up as mattering, but definitely uh, an interesting line that I definitely didn't consider. Like, is there a three drop that we were, we were drawing there that would have like saved us? Because at the time we would have put ourselves to two mana, we would have had like probably Mox Emerald plus uh, UC blow up our own Sapphire because we want the ability to like draw a trophy. Like, is there like a three drop that saves us? Not really. I guess the bra no, Brazen Bar is a two drop, right? Can tripping into stuff is a reason to like not do that. If we draw like a Brainstorm or an Ancestral or a, a Ponder. And we have two mana instead of three, we can't find these as a trophy. So it's probably not the play, right? Probably not worth dealing two damage to like turn off that many outs. We're on the draw. This hand seems okay, I guess. And cast a collector oof. It's a good magic card, right? We have a force of will. Pitch this gush or this narset or something. I feel like that one doesn't resolve. Just this gush, I think. Nice. That worked out. I really want this oof on their sapphire now. Straw mox. Lotus Oof Wasteland, your Wasteland. Um, I think we're just going to Delta go. Don't like Wastelanding their Wasteland here. It doesn't really cut them off of mana since their Mock Sapphire is the colored. So we just want to Oof them off the Sapphire as quickly as possible. Wasteland's gonna get me real good. We're gonna cast like one spell and then get Wasteland into oblivion here. I think I want the set, the oof of the goif. Cause especially because we have the second Wasteland, so we could actually try to set up a play where we get to try to, to mana deny them with an oof in play. Okay, Vintage, hell yeah, let's get it. Man, this has been a league. We're only in like game th round three, too. Alright, so drop. Cast my collector oof. Oof double wasteland looks to be our uh, our current plan here. Let's have a two eternal weekend with most of Joe's list. Seems sweet. All right, catch you later. Thanks for the uh, the tips. Ooh, opponent has nothing. I'm into that. Is opponent also not gonna waste on my drop? I guess they don't know that. I might just be going to second main for reasons. Oh no, okay. It's a combination. Man, how greedy is it to waste on their their polluted delta here? I 
I kind of want to wasteland their polluted delta and then wasteland the lands that they get off the polluted delta and then just hit them to death with this clicker. Oof. What game is this? This is game one. Oof is not a fast clock. But these wastelands also cast like very little of our spells. I don't know. Seems like not a lot of the decks in the, this format actually like, have basic lands. Especially, they, I mean, they could be on the same deck we are, or they could just be on, like, some other deck. Like, all we've seen is a blue fetch and, like, blue cards. They could be on a lot of decks. Be pretty tough. Because, like, if we fire off this wasteland and they fetch a basic, then we just don't fire off the second wasteland, and the second wasteland just lets us cast all their spells anyway. The second wasteland just doesn't tap for mana for any of the cards in our hand. So I think the first wasteland's, like, pretty free. If they just get, like, an island, we just play the second wasteland and say go. Like, the second wasteland does not let us cast any of the cards in our hand realistic. Oh, I shouldn't have six. Do you have a force of will? Dang. Alright, probably not wastelanding this Misty Rainforest. I don't think running back that play is uh, necessarily correct. The difference between zero and one mana is a lot bigger than the difference between one and two mana. Six cards in What's happening? That lets us cast nothing. I guess I guess I'm not one to talk when my opponent passes on six six cards in hand. We're gonna pass on four cards in hand with more mana. Mystic Sanctuary, huh? Seems pretty wastelandable. Ooh, alright. Now we're in business. We can cast this Narset or this Tarmogoyf. I'm into it. Yeah, I think my opponent's just playing some sort of blue X or blue XX. Good stuff deck. For sure. Can Pio afford to play Mystic Sanctuary? Because obviously it's really good with Pio, but also need a lot of lands in play already, so my gut would tell me no. Um, opponent's at 11. I kind of want to get this Narset into play. Narset's susceptible to, like, more random bullshit counters my opponent might have in hand. Also, Narset's my only blue card, so maybe we just play this Goyf. get the pressure on anyway while we're here. I think we just want to get them dead and hold up this force of will. Even like try to trophy one of their lands here. Like trophy their island or something. Depending on what how this next turn breaks. What are we casting? Opponent. Dig through time. Uh, Glad I didn't play my Narset. Narset doesn't stop dig through time. Hey, we did it. Look at that. All you have to do is force will your opponent's two super big flashy card advantage spells. Then you win the game, right? That's how that, that's how that goes. It's like fair mirror, right? Bring in like the generically fair cards. I don't know exactly what the opponent is up to. Alright, what are we cutting here? Dino push? Yeah. 
I feel like they're more spell, like, much more, like, heavy control than, like, a mid rangey deck, like, we're playing. We're playing, like, Blue Jund. With Mystic Sanctuary in their deck, they seem like they're playing a much more, just, like, very control style. So Fatal Push seems reasonable. But, like, Trophy at least can, like, uh, try to... Oh, yeah, Force of Vigor is probably bad, too. Um, it sounds like Trophy can at least kill, like, Jaces and stuff and, like, shoot land sometimes. Yeah, we actually had a really, like, apparently this this deck's, like, mid-range, like, Man of Denali plan is actually really good. Like, keeping in Collector Oof versus, uh, Fair decks is actually, like, apparently reasonable. It worked out well our first round today. I was talking to Jimmy Power Gamer earlier in the chat about it. With, like, just Wasteland, Shirt Mine, and Four Assassin's Trophies post-board, you can actually just, like, pretty efficiently Man of Denali, like, fair matchups. So, like, Oof's actually been pretty decent. And also just, like, hits them. We're supposed to be rug walkers. Yeah, I guess that tracks, right? We only saw drop and like blue sources and stuff. Let's cut like I don't know, brazen borrower. It's like a threat, but like bouncing things isn't great, right? Maybe the misdirection. I don't, I don't know why this misdirection is the deck. This misdirection baffles me. Apparently it's it's Joe's pet card, though. It's, like, good against Ancestral and, like, a Force of Will sometimes when you're, like, counter-warring. But, like, it just seems really clunky. Let's just do that. I'm just gonna keep cutting it. Alright, we have Force of Will. We have Land Emerald. We're close to casting, like, our label to our Narsa, but we don't have any way to guarantee that we can find these things. Like, our hand is full of almost castables and a Force of Will. Since you're playing Vintage, can you donate your Legacy skill to me tonight so I can post some nerds? Alright, I'll do my best. I've never played uh, 12 posts before, though, so I can't guarantee that my skill will transfer successfully. I feel like we might be able to get better 6, but... The more I play this format, the more I feel like just, like, hands with lands and force of will are, like, good enough in these blue mirrors. <laughs> you just need to answer, your like, your opponent's bullshit and then play your own bullshit. And we're, like, halfway there. Most of the other half of the way there. Let's keep this hand find out what happens. I'm, like, reasonably confident that this keep is incorrect. Never punished in my whole life, so that works out. Yeah, on the draw, I felt a little bit safer because we had a lot, like, more hits towards, like, being able to cast a turn two clicker in our set or something. Leave a little bit harder, like, this hand still can't cast a label currently, but. Probably supposed to play, play out the Emerald right now. Plays around, like, if they try to, like, spell pierce my force a little better, so I don't think there's a big draw to not playing out the Emerald. Unless they, like, blow it up or something, but, like, fair mirrors, this seems a little strange. I think I might just want to click them before I cast the Narsa. Like, Narsa's, supposed, Narsa's really good in fair mirrors, right? The, the card is just, like, unreasonable. So, like, clicking them to either, to A, force action, and B, see what my opponent has going on. We do have force will back over the Narsa, but my opponent is just passed with, like, a bunch of mana up and a bunch of cards in it any spells so i like just using the click for information or at least trying to use it for information if nothing else it's a base spell right brainstorm that's probably worth misstepping a perfect brainstorm it's like so close to ancestral recall I, I'm also lost. I'm right there with you, Fluffy Wolf. <laughs> we got a donation deck list. They asked if I would do vintage. I said yes, foolishly. And now we're just seeing how it goes. We're 1-1 one and, one and up a game in match 3 here, so it's not going horrible. Don't 
don't know why we're just in my end step here. I'm not considering doing something else. I win, I lose. Yeah, that's, that's how the, the day's mostly been so far. I guess we win this game. Well, I guess we're dead here now. Didn't know how quickly we'd get here. Yeah, our one our one loss today was like our opponent cast three oath of druids in their top fifteen cards, which kind of sucked. We we only answered the first two. Don't know what happened to my opponent here. Guess we will hang out. What's the pitch of this force of will? Assuming I have to like fire it off like next turn. <clears throat> could be the dictator time, could be the leave one because we can't cast it. But the dictator time is also like pretty far away from being cast, so. Probably one of these. Dictator time's really I mean both these cards are really good, is the thing. Alright, I would like to look at your hand upon them. I want to know what's going on here. Let me see. Oh, these are magic cards. These are certainly some magical cards. D-Tutor, Dig Through Time, Force of Will, Snapcaster, Treasure Cruise, Tree. Oh, God, I hate this. I hate this decision. All these all these cards are so good. How do I beat any of this shit? All these cards are so fucking good. Do I just... It's either... I think it, it's got to be like D-Tutor or, or leave it, right? We know their whole hand. The only castable, realistic castable they have is D-Tutor here. They could, like, and... But Demonic Tutor could be anything. So it's probably reasonable to take Demonic Tutor. All these other cards are also scary, but Cruise plus Dig means, like, one of them is clunky. The Snapcaster isn't doing a lot currently, and the Force of Will, I think, we can handle. So I think it is take the Tutor here. I wonder if we actually wanted to set up the Narset first for the specific reason of being able to like click them with Narsa and play. Oh, that's an annoying draw. Gets them to three mana. But yeah, that's fine. So now we guys Leovold, which is Good against Snap Brainstorm. Good against Dictor Time. Bad against True Name. Good Narset instead. I think we're gonna. I think they're gonna force whatever we play here, and then we're gonna force pitch our Dictor Time here to stop it. I walked away, and I heard all I heard was all these cards. So did you see? Their hand was nuts. Their hand was Demonic Tutor, Dictor Time, Treasure Cruise, Snapcaster Mage, Forceful True Nemesis. Like, I don't want to play against any of these cards. All these cards are unbeatable. I think I just want to like, get the pressure on. We could save our Force of Will and force like their true name, but that seems really shitty. I think we, we have this click too, which like click presses this advantage. I think we're gonna Narset here. They're not drawing cards this turn. I think they're gonna cast true name next turn, especially if we play the Narset. I think they're gonna force this, pitching one of their delve spells. Pitching dig through time. And we are going to also force pitching dig through time. Trophy, trophy, tutor, cruise. God, all these cards are so good. <laughs> I guess the trophy's not really doing much here. You can't trophy a true name. The Deathrite Shaman's not re really that scary, so let's get D tutor. Hit them for three. So the fact that they pitched uh, Dagger over Cruise is great for us because we have this Lee of old. So it looks like they're going to cast the true name here. And then we're just going to minus the Narset again. But then we'll have Leovold to stop them from drawing cards. And then we'll also have this Demonic Tutor for something. Yeah, True Name resolves. Strip Mine. That's a magic card. Oh, 
I'll take this Gush. Gush is a good, good magic card too, so I hear. Could also Gush, just to draw more cards. A turn incoming, yeah. We just get to like draw nine billion cards. Float black, float blue, uh, cast gush. These are good magic cards, huh? Cast this Leah hold. Let's just strip mine them, I think. We could detutor, but I think I just like strip mining. We, there's already a uh, fetch in the graveyard for this death, right? Force of Oil to stop whatever shenanigans they're up to next. Their hand is Cruise and Sandcaster Mage, both of which do nothing in the face of this Leofold currently. And we get to Demonic Tutor for whatever the fuck we want to next turn. Oh man, we could Brainstorm and then Demonic Tutor for a Shuffle. What are we detutoring? What do we want here? Time walk, I guess. Over time walk seems reasonable. It just deals them more damage, right? Gotta clear the Narsa here. Yep. Consider to be wary. The Snapcaster could end the death rate. Could double block my Leopold here if I tried to attack with it. Assassin's Trophy. Demonic Tutor for... Oh yeah, we still have a Recall in the deck. Recall's a pretty good one to Demonic Tutor for as well. But they're also at 12 here, so like... Time Walk does just get them dead. And our hand is already like fine in terms of... In terms of cards we want, right? I think I'm just going to attack with just the click here. Play around Snapcaster Mage, double block the Leopold. Just try to get them dead. I think we just want to keep this Brainstorm in hand. We can obviously try to fire off the Brainstorm first and probably find another blue card and stuff anyway. D tutor for pushing. I think we boarded the push out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Otherwise, yeah, we could have detutored for, like, a removal spell. We also could have just, like, trophy cast the trophy, but that seems like, eh. We could have just attacked with both and cast the trophy on the thing, which is not unreasonable. Attacking again is ambitious. Trying to win this damage race. So, like, now the attack is really good here, because we can trophy one of the blockers. Oh, they're time walking. Okay, that makes sense. Their end is snap, cruise, question mark. Maybe we just force their time walk. Then we just have very close to lethal, if not lethal. No, we just do have lethal. We just force this time walk. But then we just untap, satisfy with the death ray, attack them for six twice with the time walk, so yeah. Unless they're, the, on, their own card is like Force of Will or something. Okay, cool. We won! Look at that. That worked out. Certainly didn't play that optimally, but I like to think that some of the decisions I made there were, like, pretty decent. It's, like, a, a more seasoned Brainstorm player probably would have fired off the Brainstorm and then cast the the, the D-Tutor, since we didn't do anything with that mana. And, like, we're, like, X percent to hit a blue card in the top three anyway. And the, the D-Tutor gets to, like, shuffle away a bunch of, like, lanes that we had in hand and stuff, but I'm a coward, and... <laughs> 
and, and I, I'm a coward with a very bad track record of casting Brainstorm. So Brainstorm would have just, like, not found a blue card, and then we would have not been able to, like, cast Force of Will, and we would have just, like, fucking died. As far as Vintage Decks goes, at least this one has less decisions to make, and, like, less decisions that I'm bad at making, because it's like, we're playing Jund. We're playing Jund with busted blue cards. And I'm pretty good at, like, casting Jund spells, at least. Thoughts is a lot easier for me to resolve than, uh, than, like, Ponder or Brainstorm are. That's a general rule of thumb. Just <laughs> always shove the greediest lands if it works you win. If it doesn't, you just blame that your opponent drew more restricted cards. Yeah, that's how I learned. That's how uh, I learned how to treat vintage. It's just like, every one of your losses, you're just like, oh man, my opponent drew like four like restricted cards. Unfair. You just get to blame variants, because vintage is just a, such a high variance format because of the restricted list. It's, it's completely free. And no one ever makes any mistakes because all of the wins and losses are, are just variants. <laughs> Some step in all three. Yeah, exactly. Our one loss, opponent drew three Oath of Druids, the top 15 cards of their deck. Complete, complete bullshit variants. The only reason we lost. Ignore that game too, where we died to the first Oath. Biggest bird. Um, this hand has a lot of mana. I don't think it's a keep. We got we had two. We drew two restricted cards. Unfortunately, they're just more land drops. <clears throat> if we had like a busted three to play here, it'd be insane. Like if we had like a Narset or a Leopold to cast. Yeah, this is like not a close mulligan at all. This hand does stone nothing. Alright, this is a turn one library. That's pretty good. We have force backup. I think we want to put a land at the bottom, so we have a library. Trophy just punches the thing. Although trophy actually can't be cast if we put away a land. Do we have like land sapphire here? Wait, yeah, we actually do would want these lands. Certainly a keep. It's possible that the trophy's a better shove the bottom of the land is. Ship the gush. I don't know. I want a blue card for this force of will is the thing. I'm assuming this force of will is probably going to get cast in the first like two turns of the game and then gush pitches the uh, force. Keep the fetch for the sylvan. That's reasonable. I think we might shove this trophy. Because either my opponent's going to cast a scary spell that I'm going to force will... Or my, or I'm going to cast Silver Library. My opponent's going to try to stop me from casting Silver Library, and then like I think the Force of Will just like is net positive regardless. Oh, I'm just drew more lands, Luke Chump. Because I'm supposed to maybe cast Sapphire first for less, less information from the opponent side, for however little that's worth. I'm sure I'm just force willing, just like stone cold anything my butt tries to cast to counter this. Because my hand just does jack shit. Am I supposed to just force will spell pierce? That feels so greedy. Uh, well, I'm definitely gonna force will that. Alright. I will accept this. Oh no, they have a force will. Uh, Hopefully they don't draw it a counter for my Sylvan, because then we're just fucking dead. Just dead as dirt. Please let this resolve opponent. Thank you. Please also don't kill it, because I can't I can't beat that either. Oh, scary cards. This uh this looks 
Could be the same deck we played against earlier, like the Thieves deck that played all five Moxen. Not not real. Th oh, is this Mentor? Oh dear God. No, this is. Oh dear God, this is Tinker. That's much worse. All right. Well, do we have? Uh, we could hit the Oko. This misdirection wasn't good. Would like to draw two additional cards, please. Well, this Leobold can keep me alive for a turn. What are our outs? This thing, does this, this thing is indestructible, right? That's what this card does. Yeah. Our outs are Demonic Tutor for this Oko, which we don't have nearly enough mana for. Brazen Borrower and Oko, I believe. And some number of like cantrips for those cards. So let's put back the fatal push. Maybe we just draw the misdirection because our life total doesn't really matter. And this misdirection also just sucks. But we could like find a blue card later. We need to protect our spell from like a a force or something. So let's keep this. Since our life total doesn't matter. Fetch away the fatal push. Leovold. Declare blocks on Blightsteel Colossus, hopefully. We have like Lightning Bolt or whatever. We're just dead. That's, that's obviously life. Oh, well, that's scary. I will right, we'll declare blocks. Seven Library gives us a couple more spins at it. Dang, Fatal Bush, coming back. Force of Vigor, so close. But yeah, no, we're super dead. None of our cards do anything. Oh my god, that's good. Alright. What is our plan here? So my opponent just like is the... I think is the exact same deck we just played against. Or we'll play against in round one or two, whatever. The Grixis Stuff deck... It was like Tinker, Blightsteel, all five mocks in, and just like Planeswalkers and like relatively fair stuff. So I think it's like board the same way we did last time, where like, I don't know if this Liliana last up's that good. It's like a clock. It's a way to win games in like these like grindy fair mirrors. It's like not unreasonable to want to board it in. We'll cut the Force of Vigor. Oh no, they're different. They showed us Vault Key. Hang on. What did we just board in? Cut this Fatal Push. We just boarded in the Trophy and the Fluster. They showed us Vault Key, so they're different than our last opponent. That was playing like Grixis stuff. Were they playing Outcome? Outcome plays the Tinker combo, right? And they play... They obviously play all the colors of Moxon. Their land... They did play Grixis lands, which Outcome does play four colors. It could just be Outcome. In which case, we probably don't want this trophy, right? So just Fatal Push for Flusterstorm, not unreasonable. I don't know if we have other board cards for outcome. Do we want the trophy in anyway? Like it blows up a random artifact X or like monster mentor or something. Yeah, we have three. I think this is like probably fine. Although no, if their outcome we want the force figures back, right? Because we want to actually be able to like blow up their things that they're picking up. And yeah, we'll reassess for game three. Moby is, uh, it's Leavold's good, but I don't think it's that good. Our hand seems much better. I 
I want all these lands, but I also vaguely want all... I guess we don't want this trophy, right? If if I have assessed the matchup correctly, then I don't think this trophy is super good. It's good in, like, very specific instances, but I think, considering our mulligan... We have a good greedy and ship the land, but I think... I'm just gonna ship that. Probably pitching the click something. Boko seems decent. Whew. These don't cast scary cards. Yeah, well, it's like kind of a scary card, because then now they know exactly what I'm doing. Gosh, all right. Could be a thing. I could also pitch it to the force if we want both these three drops. Which is also reasonable. But Gush also draws two cards, which is pretty good. So we could also just like pitch one of the three drops and then cast the other three drop in Gush. Two is a lot of cards. If they don't cast anything Force of Will worthy this turn either, we could always just like try to gush in response, find something better to pitch. All right, so let's I think click them again. Surprise, it's Ventilian Click you don't know about opponent. We're gonna get him. I wasn't sure how to sequence these fetches either. They could like cast spells on their draw step here, or I'm gonna click, like this recall. Um, I think we want to gush here, right? Fetch, gush. Then like force the choke or something, or force pitch another blue card. Force a will, my gush, pitching take through time. All right. Well, I guess we're going to force a will there and Sustral pitching Oko. Seems better to stop them from drawing three cards than letting me draw two cards. So if they have like another force or a counter spell or something, we just get boned. So that resolves. Gonna force the ancestral pitching Oko. Fetch resolves. <laughs> Cast this. Target you. Wow, they have Tinker and nothing. Tinker could very easily become broken, though, <laughs> with just, like, any artifact draw, so I think I'd rather them have a random card than this Tinker, because we have absolutely no answers to the Tinker. I think I'll just give them a, a random card here. spell. I don't want to deal with a spell. Alright, just paralyze. Alright, both of our hands are complete dog shit. 
I don't even want to strip mine them. Their hand is underground sea island. Maybe after they fetch, we can try to strip mine them off of a color, but I'd rather just like play on my lands here. seems pretty threatening. I think I'm going to Sorcerer Speed the Death Ray. I don't want them to draw like Snapcaster Mage if that's a card that they have in their deck. I think I'm supposed to Sorcerer Speed that. Army Vintage Games have all player interacting and blowing their loads and they're stuck in Trago while they refuel. That feels like a reasonable amount of like fair mirrors and stuff. Because, like, both of you are just, like, firing your fucking, like, nuclear warheads at each other. Ah, that's a good one to draw. Opponent's draw is certainly better than mine. Glad I fired off my death ray when I did, at least. Yeah, that one's uh, a good one. Certainly. Really want to find somebody to interact with this vault key. Green, black. We evolved a little bit late to the party there, Leo. I had a brief moment of panic because I had no idea what was happening there, but it was the uh, opponent deciding if they want to skip a turn window, which I'm not familiar with. It's like, wait, what's happening here? Why aren't we in there? <laughs> Please cast nothing scary. Wow, that's very... Oh, that's not that scary. Brainstorm. Do it, coward. Wow. Alright, well, I will draw a card. That's a good one. It's a good card, I would say. In terms of cards, poss to, cards to possibly draw, I would argue that this is a pretty strong one. I supposed to fire it off? Probably not. We have so much mana next turn, right? We can still just Ancestral. Huh? Like, the Ancestral's not... The Leo's not protecting the Ancestral from being, becoming better, right? Unless they have, like, actual... Uh... Misdirection here. So I think I just let this resolve. Gosh, oh god, alright. We probably want an Ancestral now. Well, can't do anything about that gush. Please don't kill me. Ugh. So I want to be able to dig through time for an answer to, like, the vault key here, but my opponent had two mana and, like, didn't try to like vault key kill me in some capacity right so but so i want to be able to play this level because the jace is the more imminent threat so i think the play is probably leo plus shaman plus leave up dig or something like that i guess let's cast leo and see if it resolves 
Yeah, sure, mining seems like it's off the table. My mana seems more important than my opponents at this, at the present juncture. All right, that did just snap resolve. I guess we could have dig. We could have dug first and felt like a better thing to cast than Leo, but Leo just seems so good against this Jace. I also just attack the Jace down to one here, and only cast the dig. I like getting the second shaman into play though. I could just bounce the Leo again into like drawing more cards to try to find the other half of the combo or something. You have dig in response. Yeah, I probably should have started this turn with dig instead. So just like sitting on it like this. Give more opportunities to counter it. They're just fate sealing themselves. That's good for me. It means that we likely get to untap here and we can just attack the Jace down. Like Leo Bold plus death right. Do account if I had enough cards in my yard, but I, I do, so we're good. Um, one, two, three. We don't have anything that interacts with our graveyard, so we can ex exile the ancestral, I believe. I don't think we have any like regrowth effects or snapcaster mages for this ancestral, so I'd rather leave a land in the yard for uh, death rate activations. Ooh. So these are some good cards. Black Lotus, less good right now. Too bad I had to like, play out all these lands to do shit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have access to 7 mana, so we could just take Goyf and have Hardcast Force. It's like, not unreasonable. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Land is 6. One of the death rates is 7. Right? But yeah, let's take Goyf plus Force of Will. But it's not countering any of my stuff, so they don't have any counters currently. We can emerald and strip mine them. I don't think we've been playing lands, so like strip mines. Not unreasonable. Just like take them off down on mana here. Would you like to skip your turn opponent? We have lethal. They going to twelve here. We have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No. would be one off. We're missing creature as a type in yard, right? It goes to four or five because of land instant sorcery planeswalker. Could potentially kill an artifact for to find lethal or something. Or find like assassin's trophy on this time vault. Ugh. We have an instant, so let's exile their instant. Oh, that's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. I guess it doesn't really matter. They're probably just dead here. Guess the 
optimal play is cast this time walk. Uh, main one. If they, if they do somehow counter it or something, if it never resolves, then we can attack more reliably with these death rights and stuff. Alright, cool. We did kill them, in fact. Uh, so we still don't know exactly what my opponent's doing. They're just playing, like, Grixis slow stuff with uh, the Tinker combo, right? With two Tinker combos, because they have Blight Steel, but they also have uh, Vault Key. I wonder if... I think, it, I think it definitely means we want this trophy, because we saw Jace, and we saw a uh, Vault Key. don't know if it means we want Force of Vigor. Here. No, we just cut the one force of vigor that's still in our deck for some reason. I don't think force of vigor is good against exactly vault key, right? If they're not on PO, which I, I don't know, maybe they are. I don't think so at this point, though. We didn't see any of the other usual suspects in a, in a paradoxical deck, right? It's possible we just, like, legitimately didn't see them, but there are a lot of extra suspects in a PO deck versus a normal, just, like, Grixis, like, Tinker, whatever deck. See, I think it's fine to just submit this. Could potentially bring in like the last hope because this is a, a grindy matchup and it is a win con. I think I like our arrangement here. Sand has zero lands in it. Not a combo with Gush. Ding. This hand has a lot more lands in it. I'm into it. So we can't actually cast double blue spells here, which is a little awkward. Um, oh, this time walk is like explore, draw a card. We could just... Uh, uh, it looks like we might actually want to turn one walk into like turn... But we can't turn two the click. I guess we're on the draw, though. Maybe we actually just put back this Wasteland. How greedy is that? We could put back the Wasteland, turn one, land Emerald, Goyf, turn two, like, have, like, click, or, like, try to walk into the click or something. You know, this Wasteland, see how that goes. I like the Brazen Borrower as possible options to try to fight, like, a Blightsteel. Blightsteel's a scary card. Well, that's horrifying. Black Lotus, always a scary card to see your opponent cast. Could just trophy their Black Lotus. I have to imagine this Karma Whip's not resolving, right? He's passed with like four mana. What are they doing? Also, the trophy the Black Lotus is actually correct. Lotus is an incredibly scary magic card. <laughs> All right, go get him, Charm if I believe in you. Please don't hurt me, opponent. Please no hurt. Oh no, they're bolting my Tarmogoyf. Because it only has two toughness. Dang. We got, we got wrecked. Not a land. Alright. I think we're walking. I'm trying to hit a, a land drop here. Desperately. Nice, we did it. Had it all the time. Never didn't have it. Everything's fine. So what are they doing? That they just have four cards in hand. 
I want to just play this Narset. But for the third time this this, uh, this league, I want to play the Click because I want to feel safe. Because I'm a coward. But Narset's also just a really good card. I'm like reasonably insured against other stuff right now. I don't think like I don't think we're just going to straight up die because we have Brazen Bar and Trophy. They could have like. A Blight Steel plus like a Force Wheel or something, and we are super dying to that, but. Getting down Narset early seems very strong. Especially if the opponent fired off a Bolt. We already have a trophy, so I think we just want a library. Recoup card advantage. Because I'm not supposed to ever have a 6. Want to. Have the threat of force of will looming. What is nine billion mana again? Not casting anything with it. Boo. I think we want to click them rather than getting the library down. I want pressure. I don't want to know what the heck is up with my opponent's hand. What are we scared of? It's like snap bolt. this just like dig through time it's gotta be dig through time right something you need six mana for yeah dig through time with two up dang playing around my spell pierce real good um i think i should let this resolve giving them the extra one mana here matters a lot in terms of like when I'm casting this click so I might as well just draw step it there's you know, like a scary three mana instant and scary two mana instant it's like probably not a huge margin man that Narset whip was a bummer force pitch time walk alright it's not I'd say that's a win. Well, that's, that's pretty scary. I think it's not that scary. They already have a bunch of mana, right? I just think everything's scary because it's vintage. Alright, I think we want a library now. I don't think Brazen Borrow just as a 3 1 is necessarily good enough. Also, it's our only answer currently to a Blight Steel. So, I think I like just getting this library down. The Pyrrhus probably isn't getting a lot of value, but we do get to hold it up in case something happens. The Pyrrhus all going to pitch to the Force, at least now. But our life total is under, like, no pressure, so we just use this Sylvan to draw a bunch of cards. And then put the pressure on them. But it's, like, down on resources, right? Oh, they also don't get a draw card from that preordain. Boom! Roasted. Love to see it. Alright. One more lands. Kind of want all these. I guess the misdirection's not necessary. But we could also just, like, go to 11, right? <coughs> uh, excuse me. Switch is probably not doing like Jack though. Could like save a Brace Bar. Let's just keep it. What's the worst that could happen? 
Um, one, two, three, four, five cards in the yard for a cruise, so it costs three. And then we would go down to five cards in the hand, so we just dropped eight. Yeah, I think I want to uh, cast a Brazen Borrower first. I want it to actually kill my opponent. Maybe that's wrong. Yeah, it's probably wrong. We're probably just supposed to cast Treasure Cruise here. insane magic cards that we drew. Look how fucking stacked our hand is. Mental misstep. You know what? Sure. I don't think we care about the death rate that much. I think we're just going to cast this brazen borrower and kill them with our hand. Onic Tutor, then yeah, that probably shouldn't resolve. Force Pitch Pierce. Ooh, Tarmogoyf. Hot Deal. So we move five here. How scary is five? They have Lightning Bolts in their deck, so like, kind of scary. I think we're just going to leave the force on top and just cast this goif. There's creature, instant sorcery, no land in the yard. So yeah, we can fetch to shuffle away these cards and buff up the goyf here. I don't think the death rite's like a necessarily good enough draw. I think I'd rather just free up the sylvan here. Raisin Borrower could accelerate the clock to two turns. Probably good enough. Could have like petty theft of the soul ring. I don't know how relevant that actually is. Since it's negative one mana to like cast the soul ring anyway. Gush into two assassin's trophies is not the best, but you know, also not the worst. I'd much rather just like not draw these assassin's trophies. I think I just let this a break resolve. Just kill them with the goyf in three turns over the the two guys in two turns, because we have force back up and stuff. So I guess we just cast this gush to get through since we don't have a way to shuffle. Because we can't like assassin trophy our own thing. We're just gonna hard cast a gush to like draw through the the trophies and then get a fresh Sylvan again. A Dak Faden, eh? I guess we could just hard cast a force instead. Before, like the last card is like spell pierce, but 
I don't know what their last card even is. It is Spell Pierce, all right. So we could misdirection the Spell Pierce over to our misdirection. Or just let it resolve and then trophy the deck. Like, what's it going to do? It's going to... They can't loot because they don't have any cards in hand. They can, like, take a Mox and that's it. So I think they just let this resolve. That's all this does, right? Artifact, draw two, discard two. Yeah. Yeah, let me just trophy the deck. That's fine. We have three Assassin's Trophies coming up, so... You. Oh yeah, they can't. Help. They can't even like plus with the deck. Maybe I shouldn't even force this deck to begin with because they can't actually draw cards because the Narsa. But yeah, let's just kill it because we have nothing but assassins trophies in our whole deck, and our hand is gush force of will misdirection. Our top two cards are also assassins trophy, and they're four life, etc. etc. We're just like not winning this game. What did you draw, opponent? Tinker. All right, well, we'll just counter it. We did it. Look at that. Look at us. Three and one. Got our money back. In this... Horrible madness of a league. These other four matches all fired up right pretty quickly, too. It's really the only the first one that we had to like sit around waiting for a long time. Wow, this hand is so close to doing anything. But it's so bad. <laughs> that any colored mana on this hand is so much better. But it's just like two wastelands and not the green mox. <laughs> we just can't cast any more spells. Oh man. I'm gonna screenshot this hand. This hand's this hand's good. Uh yeah, this hand's gonna mulligan this hand. Wow, alright. Well you finally drew Black Lotus. This hand's actually not a super like insane black lotus hand or anything. It's obviously a keep. Uh I'll put back the wasteland. Wasteland goes well with the oof. But the, these lands go better with the Brainstorm. Yeah, I think we're going back to Wasteland. I think we're just going to just go Misty Go. And then potential to cast Brainstorm or cast Oof on two. Or both. We could, like, crack the Lotus for the Oof. What if we... No, that's like totally unreasonable, right? Lotus on Lotus for blue, cast brainstorm, fetch away the cards, and then cast turn one oof. This seems like kind of unreasonable. We could just not brainstorm it. We could just lotus oof, but like I don't know how good that is. But this lotus I don't think is getting that much better. Our deck just caps out at three mana, and we just already have two, right? Put them all to six. Hmm. Wonder if just like lotus oof is the play. Like, we're, our plan is going to be Lotus, or, like, Oof on 2, which makes this Lotus not a good card, so... I actually don't hate it. Let's just... Black Lotus or Collector Oof. I don't think I want to do, like, the, the weird Brainstorm fetch play. Go. I 
guess this was where the fetch is they'll drop, I think. Ah, damn, this doesn't look like our plan worked out very well. I was hoping Oof was better against my opponent's hand. I think we want to brainstorm here. We could find like a death ride or something. This underground sea is already garbage. Sure. It's not seem like the optimal time for them to fire off their brainstorm, but maybe if we're just like fucking dying. Maybe they really don't want my brainstorm to resolve, I don't know. Hey, these are pretty good cards. I guess this Mox Jet's actually not very good because we have an open play. So put back Mox Jet, UC, fetch for death rate. Fetch UC, cast death rate. We have the ability to force will something scary, pitching our time walk, or we have the ability to cast time walk to punch our opponent some more. Both of which are okay, but we're also down two guards to seven, which is. Please don't cast a scary card. I don't think that's worth force willing. I think that this time walk is just an explore for them. I think we're just walking here now. We'd like walk, drain them, untap. I like mana drain my walk. Boo. Well, that sucks. can't do anything about it. Oh, nice. I love it when Mana Drain is just... <laughs> is just Counterspell. Let's eat their Mana Drain. That's not really what we wanted to draw. Actually, it's okay, because we hard cast the yeah, I'll take it. Not totally unreasonable here. Card, six cards for the treasure cruise, that's pretty good. I'd say let's go on a cruise. Finally decided to kill my collector roof. They have five cards in hand. A reasonable chance this treasure cruise just doesn't resolve. <sighs> So we could just exile our whole yard. It cuts down on graveyard food, but it leaves us with two mana left. So I think we just want to exile our whole yard here. I'm 
counter my cruise. Oh, that's a rough mana drain, huh? <laughs> they have, they certainly have a lot of mana. Please don't hard cast your blade steel colossus. <laughs> Technically, raise play steel on board. Nice. <laughs> you love to see it. Eat your mana drain. Sure, brainstorm. They can't snap the mana drain, so. Yeah, so now we don't have lethal. So the Snapcaster Mage can block, but this they have to find an answer for the Death Ray, or the Death Ray is just gonna kill them over two turns. We also could just like drop deck. Oh, they're dead, cool. I guess if they're brainstorm locked, then they know they're dying with the Death Ray in two turns. All right, so like Esper stuff that we don't really know. Man, this has just been a recurring theme. It's just like when your opponent dies, like 50% of the time, you just have no idea what's going on. There's like Esper stuff. We would just run it back. I guess there are blue decks. This Fluster is probably fine, and this Force of Vigor is probably less fine. That's probably a reasonably safe play. Although they could be like outcome, right? In which case. I did not. I still. I want those. Uh, those Force of Vigors. Uh, this hand has some good magic cards. I'm into it. Opponent also has good. Uh, so am I supposed to break this immediately and just deal with the repercussions, or do I wait it out a little bit? Because <sighs> we could just like, uh, could just like land Mox, Death Right, and just deal with it. I think that's probably for the best. We only have four cards in hand though, so we could just try to hit more land drops than them. Seems kind of dicey considering we only have two. Let's just say land go, at least for a little bit here. We'll just petty theft their standstill. Easy. What could possibly go wrong? Well, we send a tundra. Although, no, they're just not casting spells, so. Don't really have to waste send it yet. I'm just gonna keep hitting my land drops too, opponent. We can also try to cast our first spell in their end step, so they have, they can't like do anything with their cards. So we might want to just like try to like end step click them or something. Depends on how our draws end up breaking here. More lands is good. Hitting their land drops very well, also. Maybe my plan isn't breaking so good. We may need to pull the trigger here on this turn, which sucks because now we've just like. Oh, my opponent's missing a land drop. But they only have five cards in hand, we have seven, so we're moving to discard next turn. So I think now's the point where we want to fire off this click. Assuming they like don't counter it or something, which they probably will. 
we'll have to like move the discard, and it's like the least optimal time for them to have this standstill. So I think we're about ready to go. You see, drop. I think I actually want another you see here. So we have so many double blue spells and stuff. Blue, blue, colorless, click you. All right, click on the stack. I imagine probably does not resolve. Ooh, it does resolve. Borrower the pearl for value. <laughs> the big brain plays. They might just like kill it now. Yeah, plow in response. So I have to move this card here. We're not nearly close enough to bluster storm that. So whatever. Brainstorm. Storm counts three. Yeah, the new So I could counter this brainstorm if I wanted to, or at least try to. They could also hide their best card. I'm in Death Luster Storm this brainstorm here. The fact that we've played like Drago for a bunch and we both have a bunch of lands to play means the Fluster is less likely to be super relevant, and that also means that uh, our Vendilla Click gets to take the good cards here. What are the good cards here? This moat doesn't seem particularly threatening. Taking the snap's probably just better than taking the plow, so I guess we just take the snap. A factory, so it's good to save our wasteland here. tutoring for recall they don't have force of negation up currently unless they top deck the blue card which would kind of suck but we just like detour into recall here it's not bad I think they have plow makes all of our creature plans a lot worse let's cast demonic tutor and see what happens Let them keep. Yeah, it's also an option. Snapcaster Mage is just like a really good card, though. Oh, they do have. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm stupid. I didn't look, I didn't look at this uh, Mox Pearl. I'm just dumb. Could have brazen borrowed the Mox Pearl. Take them off Force Negation. Yeah. That's like. I should have played something else as a like time walk or something as a bait spell. But yeah, I'll live with my consequences, I suppose. Yeah, well. Just asking me about if they want they wanted like advice after the match about like countering the tutor versus counter the tutor target, but I'm just dumb and told them that like I just forgot that they had three mana in play. But anyway, uh, now we'll ponder our death rate's probably gonna get plowed. It's almost definitely gonna get plowed. That's just life. We want to ponder into like more threats. We have this brazen bar, which is a threat, which is reasonable. Uh, 
Crusher. Crusher seems like a good magic card. So does Del second Delray also seems like pretty good. So that we play both death rates here. That 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 no shuffle death rate death rate. Set. It's pretty good against Treasure Cruise. You could brazen borrow it. Verdict. Uh oh, these are all bad things for me to see. I guess we could just walk, right? They their hand is what do they play? Flooded Strand. I don't know about the Flooded Strand. So their hand is Factory Delta Plow Moat Verdict. So we could attack the Narset for two here. If they cast a Plow, then we could potentially, like, Borrower walk. If they don't cast a Plow, then we get to, like, clear the Narset overturns. So yeah, let's attack the Narset for two here. Yeah, they fire off the Plow. Problem with this plan is that we're just like walking into the supreme verdict. Because we're not necessarily walking into it because they had to like, kill my other thing. But we want to get definitely want to get this Narset off the board because we want to cast our treasure cruise. So we want to cast Brazen Borrower, Blue, Blue, whatever. I guess I'm supposed to do it in the opposite order, but I do know I have perfect information here, so it doesn't matter. How's the benches thing going? Pretty well. We're three and one. We're in match five right now. Alright, so let's enter combat, clear the Narset, leave the death rate. Um, yeah, let's fetch just fuel our yard more, I think. It's Death Rush on his bus as well as Legacy. Not nearly as much in Vintage, but still a very good card. Get another drop here. Go for a cruise. They have no lands in their yard currently, but they have two fetches and we're going to waste on this factory eventually, so... Call, is that what I'm supposed to call that? Ancestral? Recall is apparently taboo in the Ancestral Recall casting community because there's an actual card called Recall that people like play in a, an old school or something. Was, uh, well, actually, no, I don't really want to play with the board here because they have this verdict. So I think I just say go. As much as I want to like cast all my spells and like do busted shit here. We, we like Black Lotus, Leovold, Death Right, just get them, but no. We're just gonna say go. Cause they're probably gonna have to Supreme Verdict this board. Especially cause their hand is currently like nothing in a moat, which doesn't do anything against Death Right or Brazen Borrower anyway. There's the factory. We can wasteland now. Yeah, this is a verdict. Pearl Pearl Island from factory. I want to play Lotus. Is there a reason that I would need Lotus in play though? Like we already have a billion mana. Like they're not. Oh dear God, what's happening? Wow, that's scary as shit.
man, they get to get this Narset back and then also Supreme Verdict me? Wow, that's real bad news, huh? Ugh. Well, at least we just already drew a bunch of cards, so I don't think Fluster Storming this is a good play. I guess we get to eat this Sven's Reclamation at least. Sven, Sev, Sevin, Sevin, Sevin. Unfortunately, we can't, like, death ray eat the Narset, because that's not how death ray works. <laughs> what did they get? They got a Jace. Oh, dear God. They can't cast the Jace, though, right? They have to, ver they, like, have to verdict this turn to set up the Jace for next turn, especially because they can, like, wall it over the moat, too. Yeah, they, like, have to play the, the verdict here. And they need double white. Yep. Eat the reclamation. Their end is. I'm pretty sure. It, yeah, because they, they don't. Uh, we haven't seen a delta yet. So their end is delta mode Jace right now. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we might be able to actually pressure it enough so that they can't cast the Jace yet. Because if we have like Leopold in play and stuff. Ooh, trophy. Alright, trophy's good. I don't think we want a trophy the Narsa. We might want to just need a trophy the Mope so we can attack these planeswalkers. We'll see. So I think we just want to like spew our hand here. Since we've gotten past the Supreme Verdict. Blue. Black, and yeah, we're gonna wasteland this factory for sure. Yeah, we play the trophy because we can cast, potentially cast the assassin's trophy this turn, or play the delta. The Narset again, which sucks, but we get Mana Drain, good card to know about, but we have potentially have the ability to Fluster Storm. Yeah, this is the moat here, so yeah, we'll be able to Fluster Storm on Mana Drain. Oh, this is the Chase, wow. They, like, bounce the Leovold? Seems not great. Brainstorm opponent, don't do it. Yeah, they're just bouncing the Leopold. And we'll draw a card here. Ooh, Force of Will, that's good. So now we can clear the Narset and just replay the Leopold. Their hand is Mana Drain, Moat, Delta. We could also just tro no, the Jace doesn't do anything. We don't need to trophy the Jace. Yeah, like I wasn't gonna trophy end step there because they have the mana drain in hand and we only have the two mana so we couldn't have fluster back up. I don't think I'm even gonna trophy the Jace this turn though because we just get to play this Leopold instead.
now they have Delta Moat. We have a trophy for the Moat. The Jace isn't threatening because of the Lee of Hold. Um, missed up in Force of Will. We're looking pretty good here. Second Supreme Verdict, or like Snap Supreme Verdict, would definitely put us in danger. We want to probably death rate the Supreme Verdict next turn for that exact reason. To cut off the amount of uh, Supreme Verdicts they have available to them. Yeah, this feels like the moat. Yep. We could, oh yeah, we could hard cast Force of Will with Lotus. That's that's reasonable. So it's definitely a reason to play that the Lotus out. Like it's not doing anything else in our hand, right? Like we don't need Storm Counter or anything. That's for sure reasonable to play with the Lotus that turn. Just so we can hard cast the the Force. Bouncing my Leo again, huh? All right. Draw my card. So they have one card in hand, four mana up. Just wondering if I want to just fire off this trophy now. They have like spell pierce. It just sucks <laughs> because uh, because we have to like burn a force of will on it. So I think we're just rather on tap think our mana is that tied up, especially because we do just have this Lotus sitting here. I think I'm supposed to probably have this Lotus in play right now, even still, because we'd like potentially hard cast, although if we have a removal, it's probably Plow. I'm just gonna play with this Lotus now so I don't fuck something up later. Play with the Jace. Replay the Leo. The only thing we're really scared of here is they can hard cast a force on me. We can just pierce that. You see Spell Pierce. See, the only thing we're scared of right now is uh, Snapcaster Mage or Supreme Verdict. We only have one turn to hit the Snapcaster Mage. And there, actually, we can just force with the Snapcaster Mage if it's there. The only thing we're scared of is like actual second Supreme Verdict. Oh, well, that's probably pretty scary. This could just be Supreme Verdict, so we'll probably just force pitch misstep. We could potentially try to shuffle away this bayou. We don't have any guaranteed ways of shuffling. I don't know if I want to fire off this brainstorm because we just we're so little low on like cards in hand and stuff. I might just want to sit on this brainstorm for a little bit at least. Brainstorm first. I don't know if we want to even want to cast it. Maybe we do just want to just to accelerate the clock, right? possible that we just want to like brainstorm for a Tarmogoyf, but I also don't even know if I would cast a Tarmogoyf here, because I don't think we want to overextend into like a Supreme Verdict, just based on the fact that we already have a huge amount of pressure in play. Could also pitch the brainstorm, but keeping the misstep here seems pretty bad. This Narsa seems pretty good though. I'm into it. We'll brainstorm. Kind of want this to resolve. We're, we're like not actually. We could just rip like an actual force of will to counter this mana drain. We'll brainstorm. Oh, well, hey, library's pretty good. This oof is pretty not good, but it's a threat potentially. So yeah, put this these back. Mana drain's good. I, I should have kept the land here, because then we can train with death rate, but now I have to attack with it, because I'm not going to crack the lotus. And, like, we're not casting Zoof this turn anyway, so we could have just kept a land and played the land here, and then drained with the death rate, and then, like, drawn the Oof or whatever anyway. Notably, they would be at 6 instead of 7, which still isn't, like, lethal regardless, so. Alright, cool. 
gonna sit GG back first. Nice. Got a four one. Seems pretty sweet. So as someone who just never, like, basically never played Vintage before, especially with like actual good Magic cards like this, we uh, we four one. This deck feel, felt very good and felt like pretty intuitive. I've I have some history playing like Jun style decks, so like some of your decisions, like all you're doing is like casting spells and like grinding them out with card advantage, right? Like you're just going to put them in the ground with like your your like draw spells. You're gonna assassin's trophy their important things, and you're gonna like grind them out with death rites and hit them with charm whiffs and stuff. So it's like not like super decision heavy things that like I'm really bad at when it comes to blue decks. Vendillion Click is a lot more akin to Thossies than it is to, like, like cantrips, right? Narset isn't exactly a, like, it's not like a choice of, like, setting up future turns and stuff. You're just picking the best of four cards. The ones that I'm really bad at are the Ponders and the Brainstorm. It's the one where you have to, like, make a bunch of micro decisions all in one card. Like, Treasure Cruise, you just get three cards. Ancestral, you just get three cards. Dig Through Time, it's basically just two Demonic Tutors, so it's, like, not really a cantrip decision as much. You know, definitely played pretty suboptimally in basically all those games, but I had a lot of fun. Shoutouts again to I Do Nothing a lot for the uh, donation. This deck was just sweet. I can see why uh, Joe did so well with it. I mean, I'm not an expert in vintage, but like we we actually just played like five blue decks, right? We didn't play any of the any shops or dredge, which is like most of this sideboard is for. It's like all shops and treasure cards. It's like kind of in between. But yeah, that was fun. Uh, I am pretty tired though, and I have Pokemon Shield to go play. So uh, we're gonna be signing it off in a second here. Let's go host Anurag, who is, nope, not hosting Anurag because he is not streaming anymore. Um, nobody's real streaming. I guess it makes sense, because there's the, uh, the SCG going on right now, right? Who we got to host? Let's go host Fluffy Wolf. Fluffy Wolf was in chat earlier. They went to, uh, they went to go stream, I guess, to playing some Pioneer. Playing some, looks like, Just Guy Fires, Planeswalker stuff. Seems sweet. But yeah. Go send them some love. Anyway, as always, thanks everybody for coming and hanging out. Hope you had a good time. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can follow, subscribe, donate. We do donation deck lists here, like this one today. Do do a, a little bit of delving into formats like this. Not an expert by any means, but I love to have fun and play all around with a lot of decks, even if I'm not super familiar with them. It's always a nice learning experience. But anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Hope you have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys all later.